Hi guys and welcome to Unreal Engine 4 Devcast and this is Devcast number 3. Uh, we are going to talk about Unreal Engine 4 and uh, Houdini Engine. Uh, I already talked uh, about it in the last Devcast but there is so much you can explore inside uh, Houdini and uh, that you can reuse using the Houdini Engine inside Unreal that it's qu quite an unlimited topic. But uh, today I will also make it uh, fast, so this is not going to be a long devcast because I'm trying to to bring a smaller and more right on the topic devcast. So let's see and watch how it goes. So I already started my my Houdini. I will delete it. So what I'm going to talk about today is. Uh, how you can use inputs uh, for digital assets. What I mean by inputs is that we can, uh, for example, take a static mesh from Unreal Engine and um, use it as an input to a digital asset inside Houdini. And this opens up a lot of possibilities. So we we not just create some kind of proced procedural geometry inside Houdini and bring it to Unreal and uh, modify it and stuff like that. We can reuse all this procedural uh, stuff and uh, the power of Houdini to manipulate existing geometry, to spawn existing geometry and stuff like that. So let me show you something. For example, we wanted uh, a poly reduction basic stuff. If you don't have a plugin for for poly reduction and generating low poly meshes for, for some kind of lots, uh, we can use Houdini digital asset for that. So what I'm going to create is a, is a digital asset that will take a static mesh as an input from Unreal Engine and then create it will create a lower lower poly mesh from that static mesh and output it as an output you can bake it and stuff like that so you can actually use single digital asset to generate all your low poly meshes as you want so first i'm going to create the geometry okay we already have a geometry so i'm going to create some kind of box uh, this is will this is something that will not be inside uh, inside Unreal, inside our digital asset, it's just a substitute that will be then uh, substituted by by uh, actual static mesh inside uh, Unreal Engine 4. So I'll create a subnet from it and let's create a poly reduce node. So this is one of the subs that can be used to uh, generate lower poly uh, geometry. The other one, for example, is a remesh. But uh, for now, I I will go with this one. It's up to you, which which one you will use. You can pretty much do anything. So let's uh, cover this to a subnet as well because we need a subnet to generate a digital asset, and uh, I will call it a poly read poly red. Okay, I will I will save it on my. Uh, uh, one of my SSDs and call it poly red. Okay, so this is our our digital asset and uh, we want a single parameter. So there is this parameter, the keep percentage. This is uh, this tells you how how much of the polygons or how many of the polygons uh, percentage wise you want to keep from the original geometry sec. So if you if you check it out we have just the cube, so it's pretty pretty hard to generate a lower poly model from a cube, but it, it tries. And based on our percentage, it will just reduce the geometry of the cube. So I will use this parameter. I will bring it to the digital asset. So type properties, we have these parameters, as I showed you in my last devcast. And I will take the parameter from the nodes, and it's the poly reduce node. So let's take it, and we have here we we have it here in our UI as you can see. Okay, I, I need to say accept. Oh, I'm not rendering the subnet. So now it works. 
if you check the input output this 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 parameter uh, tab is uh, one of the tabs that I, I talked about in uh, a previous devcast but that's all we worked uh, with with just the parameters now we are working with an input this is the subnet input this subnet is not going to make it to our to our actual digital asset as I said but it's it's using as an input and we can check our inputs here we can even rename them to something that we <laughs> is most more clear to what we actually expect as an input so this is uh, this is an input that the actual digital asset inside the Unreal Engine will will look for so we need to specify it, but otherwise this, this will not generate any geometry obviously inside Unreal Engine so again when, uh, I apply except to save our digital asset and now I have this uh, simple scene inside Unreal it's using Unreal Engine 4.11 and now import our digital asset okay it's imported drag it to the to the scene it's in the scene and as you can see this there is our parameter the keep percentage and it didn't generate any geometry it's just the the placeholder the Houdini logo so and here are our inputs the name that we left as, as uh, the default and what we can input here we can input the uh, geometry we can input some kind of asset which is the Houdini asset we can input curve we can input the landscape but we are going with geometry which means we are going to input a static mesh so we want uh, to generate a lover pori model from this this table let's check to this table is quite quite high poly so let's go to our poly red and go for our table model so this is our table and here is our table inside our asset uh, the the pivot is because we do have the the pivot different in uh, in Houdini you can you can change that if you want but it doesn't matter for our example and now if you play with the key percentage parameter you can see okay we restarted the pivot because it generates the geometry if you if you change the parameter it regenerates the geometry that's why it restarts the, the pivot and if you change the parameter you can see it reduces the number of polygons for our our model and we can generate a lower poly model for the for the table so sorry that was my girlfriend so and we can actually bake the the uh, asset whether we created the lower poly asset out and then we can use it for a lot for example and stuff like that. so we don't need a complex plugin or some kind of uh, expensive uh, substitute to generate our lot geometry and if we go to lit you can see that it gen actually generates correct UVs it keeps the material of the of the input asset and all the UVs are working as well and we have our our lot <laughs> and it's just using 12 percent of the polygons from the actual high poly model pretty sweet now okay that's not all I'm going to show you something something different with that as well as I said you can use any any of the Houdini procedural stuff to work with the input geometry so let, let's disconnect this one and let's say we want to generate destruction it's, it's going to be a little bit more complicated than I will show you in this in this video but I, I will just uh, point you toward the, towards the way that uh, how it's done so what first what we'll do is uh, create the create the scatter node uh, what this node does 
sorry. What this node does is uh, it creates. I input our geometry there and show it. It creates points on and inside the volume of the geometry you specified. This is uh, this is why you need the actual <laughs> actual geometry, some kind of substitution for the assets that you will use inside Unreal, because otherwise we wouldn't see anything. So what we did is uh, create the points inside the inside the cube we have here and on the cube as well and now we are going to use the Voronoi to generate the destruction so Voronoi, Voronoi fracture and we'll input the actual geometry as our first input and we'll input the points as our second one and as you can see it created the actually the parts of the of the cube that you can destroy and do pretty much anything with it you can you can specify based on we weight that you want the distraction to happen here to have a smaller parts here and there and you can uh, look at it up for in Houdini tutorials you can pretty much do anything there and then we just Explore this as w again. We can. We are, we are going to delete the the key percentage because we don't really need it anymore. And I'm going to delete this as one as well because maybe it will not go as well if there is some kind of hidden note. So, and uh, let's go back to to Unreal here. We have our our Houdini asset again it, it looks for I'm going to rebuild it and it looks for the geometry so I'm going to use the table as well now it generates all the geometry that's what, why it takes uh, a bit much more time that, that it took before with the poly reduction now it's generating all the small pieces all the parts from the table so now we will check it out and move it again we have a pivot somewhere else and we go to the wireframe you can see that the table is actually smashed to into uh, small pieces what do you what do you don't see though is all the parts you see the generated geometry the actual ge ge generated geometry, the wireframe, and all the parts how you would see it inside the Houdini, but you don't see the each of the pieces as a as a s static mesh. So in Unreal, you wouldn't be able to assign some kind of physics to uh, to all the parts independently. So there is just just a single static mesh which is <laughs> just high poly. You can break it up. What would you need to do, and I'm not going to do here, but I already did, uh, so it works, is generate all, generate different static meshes for all the parts you need as a, for the distraction, for example. So, and how you, how you are going to do that is you can aid either create a different material for the part, because everything that has a different material inside Houdini is a different static mesh that's their that's how they work the Houdini engine how it works everything with different material is a different uh, static mesh which isn't really a good idea because we want to, for, we wanted to use the actual material from the from the table so the other stuff you can do is you can uh, create groups uh, with a different uh, name and they are called the rendering uh, collision geo. Th those are this is a specific specific prefix for a group name inside inside Houdini that will be recognized as a as a individual geometry inside Unreal. So, for example, we we'll, we will have a render uh, rendering collision geo one rendering collision geo two ish for to one hundred or f some kind of high number, and all these parts with these names will be generated as a as a separate static mesh 
uh, how do I know that it's the collision uh, generating uh, collision uh, the rendering collision geo? It's because it's specified inside the Houdini uh, news. You can go to the project settings, uh, plugins, properties, Houdini engine, and this is these are spe special prefixes for uh, collision geo. Collision geo is uh, used for a uh, collision geometry so if you if you generate uh, something and you don't you want to use it as a for example you have a high high poly mesh of a table and then you have a low poly table that you want to use a collision uh, inside the Houdini then you will generate this low poly table and uh, name it collision geo or collision geo something because collision geo is prefix and then it will be handled as a collision geometry inside Unreal not as a actual geometry and then there is the rendered collision geo as i said and this is this can be used to force houdini to generate an object for each of these groups that has rendered collision geo prefix so you would have the rendered collision geo one to let's say hundred and you would have all these static meshes generated from pretty much any any object you can use I use the table, you can use the chair, you can use uh, anything. Again, it's building the geometry for the chair. But uh, watch out for the... Watch out now that we have a distracted actual the chair. Watch out for the internal faces because even though this this generate geometry is using the material from the chair the material doesn't have an actual you know the texture the material for the internal faces that will uh, be generated inside because no one the the people that actually the, the created this material didn't know that we are going to destroy it so there is no inside chair, chair material Okay, guys, that's all for now. I hope it was short and up to the point. If you have any questions or, or you want to suggest something for the next uh, devcast, I'm all ears and enjoy Unreal Engine and Houdini. It's awesome.